hello friends in this lecture we will discuss something about the inter process communication which is otherwise called as ipc and that will come under second unit in this lecture we will see the types of processes and need for inter process communication and the two fundamental models of inter process communication that is first one is shared memory and second one is message passing all these things we will discuss in today's lecture first let us see the types of processes in operating system more number of process can execute simultaneously the processes are either independent process or cooperating process first what is independent process if the process cannot affect the other process or it may not be affected by other process then this is called as independent process that is it cannot share any data with other process then it is called as independent process and the second one is cooperating process okay the cooperating process means the one process may be dependent on other process is called as cooperative process it can affect or affected by other processes executing in the system okay so the processes can share the data with other processes which are called as cooperating process and next let us see what is the need of inter process communication here uh, there are several reasons uh, between the process to communicate each other the first one is information sharing second one is computation speed up and third one is modularity and fourth one is convenience okay first let us see what is information sharing information sharing means some piece of code may be shared by more than processes hence we need to create an environment to share such files or information that should be common for all the processes okay so that all the process can concurrently access those uh, piece of information then this is called as information sharing and second one is computation speed up so computation speed up means if there is a big task that should be executed faster then that task should be divided into sub task so many sub task suppose if it is our task this is very big and this should be run very faster hence we have to divide that into sub task this is sub task and all those sub task should execute parallel and this is called as multi processing system and this, by this way we can increase the speed of our computation and next one is modularity okay here we have to construct our system into modular fashion that is the system's functions will be separated and that will execute a separate process or threads this is called as modularity modularity means this is our system and the system functions will be separated and each function is called as a module the modules will be each functions will be separated and that is called as module 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 1 module 2 and the fourth one is convenience convenience means a individual user can execute more number of tasks at a time for example the user may use a document file Uh, they may use the media player for listening music and compiling uh, the java program or any other program in parallel okay so the user can execute more number of programs at a time so we need to create a convenient environment for the users also okay these are the need for the inter process communication and next let us see the fundamental models of uh, inter process communication here the process more number of process can communicate with each other and they need to exchange data and information between each other here the two models are the first one is shared memory and second one is message passing shared memory means a region of memory that is a portion of memory is shared by the process and the process can exchange information by reading and writing the data on the shared region okay see this is the memory and this is process 1 and this is process 2 these 
portion will be common and in this portion both process 1 and process 2 can read and write the information and next one is message passing model so in the message passing model the communication will be takes place by means of exchanging the messages between the processes let us see all those things in detail first one is message passing here uh, message passing is uh, useful for exchanging smaller amount of data between the processes hence the conflicts will be avoided and it is also easy to implement when compared to shared memory and the message passing will be implemented by using the system calls hence it required some more time when compared to shared memory access okay and this is the simple diagram for message passing here uh, we are having process a and process b if process a wanted to send some messages to process b means it will send the message to kernel then the kernel will send this particular message to process b okay that is the process a send a message to message to kernel and the kernel transfer this message to process b right so this is how the message passing will be taken place next let us see the shared memory system here a portion of memory a region of memory will be shared by both the process then this is called as shared memory system here the memory uh, shared memory will be reside in the address space of the processes they are creating in the shared memory segment so in this portion itself the memory will be um, reserved for both the processes and if the other process wanted to communicate by using shared memory segment means they need to attach the address spaces this address space should be attached to other process also then only they also access this shared memory and the address space will be exchanged uh, by the both processes by reading and writing operations okay so for example the process a can write something this will write something and the written data will be read by process b process b will read the data okay and the form of data and location are determined by this process only not under the control of operating system and this process also responsible for ensuring they are not writing to the same location simultaneously this is important okay otherwise conflict may occur up to this we have seen the inter process communication that is ipc under this types of processes and the need for inter process communication after that we have seen the two fundamental inter process communication models first one is shared memory and second one is message passing and now the question time why inter process communication is important students write your answers in the comment box and in the next class we will see another important topic from second unit thank you